Hello everyone, and welcome to an episode of Jargus Ranger Review. And this week we'll be looking at the sixth episode of Megaforce, Harmony and Discord. So this episode starts off with Troy running through the forest. Again, that same forest. They just love to reuse that this season, I guess. And, not, and the story doesn't even take place there like a mystic forest. Anyway, he's running through there, I guess training again, since he's the only one that does it this season. And Emma's riding her bike through the path we find. And he sees her and tries to catch up with her and get her attention, but she doesn't hear him. And so he follows her over to a clearing there with some trees, and she's singing. She's not a bad singer, actually. And she's singing right when the tree is about to bloom, like the only time it does in the year. And she says she learned that from her mother, and it's implied that she's dead. And that I did not expect. You usually don't see a dead parent reference on Power Rangers too often. Actually, I'm not even sure if it was really brought up in um, Samurai. So back at the War Star ship, the monster of the week we get is called Discord. And he is a horrible, horrible rocker. Please, terrible music, even just as the background music is shown on the show. Not only that, he makes very bad rhymes. Interesting enough that sometimes I think he sounds like Otto from The Simpsons, but that might just be me. So he starts playing his tale music, and everyone in the area can't take it at all. Strangely enough, that science teacher whose name I can't recall at the moment seems to like it and is a bit dancing to it. It's one bit of comic relief we get in this episode. So the rangers take him on and they fight a bunch of loogies again. Strangely enough, I like a lot of times so when they fight a horde of foot soldiers when the monster appears. This time it doesn't appear to get so bland and repetitive. Looks like they've found a way to keep it fresh. And that I like a whole lot. And but Jake doesn't seem to be too bothered by this music. He says it's bad but not that bad. I wonder why it doesn't hurt him so much. So anyway, after some fighting, Discord hits Troy and Emma and they end up demorphing. And then Discord runs away to do more mischief. And so Warstar sends Rock there to make sure he finishes off the Rangers. Now back in everyday situations, uh, whenever Troy and Emma are near any music, especially loud music in general, it hurts them a lot and they get bad headaches and have to leave. Now I did like the scene of this one kid carrying around his stereo at the school. Cause this was me in high school, but he looked like he was like in 7th grade to me when he first walked in. Yeah, must be a pretty young actor. So back with Discord, uh, Rock set him up a sound stage so that he can broadcast his damaging music all across the world. And it shows signs of people in all over the world in different countries uh, feeling the effects of his shenanigans. Joy even almost falls over into some deep water because it knocks him down. So through all this it makes me wonder, how come the Rangers never get teleported to the command center? I mean, they were in the first episode, but now it's just like a one quick clip in, and it's gone. I mean, this would be a great opportunity to regroup and make a plan, but instead it's just there so that we can have a chance to remind us it's outside. That's about it. So the Rangers try to take on Discord with a rock, and they can't do much because the uh, music is keeping them from fighting. Luckily, Troy finds a way to use his Morva to project Emma singing her song at the beginning of the episode into the device that was moving that song all over the world and that takes out Discord's power. So Varag runs away and they finish off Discord. So when they're throwing the Megazord, Discord actually tries to attack them with his music and it's just blowing up everything around them. I did find it neat that it was just destroying everything just from the sound. This actually reminded me of an episode from the original Ninja Turtles cartoon. That one guy who uh, hooked up his piano or organ, whatever, to like a giant loudspeaker that was destroying the city. Now I don't know if anyone else made that connection. And when they do form the Ghosty Great Megazord, I noticed how they showed the side of it reflected on the building it was standing next to on its glass. That was a really good effect, I liked it. And for the rest of the battle, it went pretty simple. Uh, the heads of the Zord all attacked Discord to stop his attack. And then the mouth from the dra Dragon Zord, which is I think was on the chest, uh, shot a flamethrower to damage. Him. Finally, they did the standard victory charge and destroyed it. An episode ends back on the War Star with uh, 
Malcor trying to figure out what to do. He decided that the Rangers are too big a threat to leave alone and that some big plan has to be done to take them out. Which means that pretty soon we're gonna see some big things from them, most likely. Because in Ghost Ranger, they went out by like about in episode 16. So my guess is, if Power Rangers is doing a bit uh, accelerate then, by episode 10, the latest, they'll most likely be gone. So over the next few episodes, it's when things are really going to start picking up action wise. Overall, I thought this was a pretty decent episode. There are no new Zords at Powers, just straight up figuring out how to deal with a new monster. Which is a good thing, because you don't want to be too overwhelmed with a huge variety of abilities right off the bat. Just a few to get us introduced to the characters and their personalities and what they can do. But to keep things from getting stale, they're already setting up things that are going to happen in the next episode. Because now it looks like War Star is finally going to do something effective in the battle. Instead of just sitting oddly by while a new monster of the week just messes things up and seem to be not caring anymore. This time, they seem ready to take action. So I'm looking forward to what's going to happen next time. Overall, I give the episode, I guess, around a 9 out of 10. Because it worked pretty well. Actually, a 10 out of 10, because there wasn't really anything wrong with it at all. Well, I, yeah, I'll give it 9 because it didn't go above it to do something amazing. So yeah, it was a pretty good episode, and the season's still going strong, like I've been saying, and I'm still hoping it continues. Anyway, this is Jarkus Zero, and thank you for watching, and I'll uh, see you next week for the newest episode. Till then, everybody. Go, go, power,